Hey, hey, you are watching the Blockade Pinball Podcast. Episode number three, 200, 200, yeah, 200. Not bad. Uh, and uh, I'd be Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me as always, halfway around the world, it'd be Jared Morgan. Hello, everyone. It's sort of like, um, I don't know, we're, we're in our 200s, which means, does that mean like we're in our 20s in podcast years? I don't know uh, how it works. I don't know how that would... I, did, I didn't know that there was a dog years or anything else like that. I just know that we're woefully behind uh, the people that stream every day. <laughs> yeah, but this is true. Uh, uh... <laughs> it, it takes a special kind of something in order to uh, to be able to to commit to that. It's special kind of something called being, oh yeah, paid. <laughs> paid, that's right. Yeah, that's right. It's called a job. And yeah, it's... It's a thing. Like, yeah, you, you know, know I, flip, if, if, if I was making the money that they're making for doing full time streaming, I too would uh, commit to it like a full time job. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, but indeed. We're, we're, but no, we do it. For, we do it for the love. For the love. For the love. Yes, and uh, mm. uh, we're we're trying to make some improvements here, and we saved them for episode two hundred. As you can see, now we're doing split screen. Ooh, mm. special, shiny. I know, right? Um, have to do the uh, the the what <laughs> the Toy Story ninjas. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the aliens there. Um, yep. So anyway, uh, we've got special stuff planned for today. We're going to kick things off with an interview that I did uh, earlier this morning. Uh, we're going to let that play out. And then uh, joining us after that, we have special guests. So you ready for this, Jared? I'm ready for it. All right, here we go. Okay, joining us now, special guest for this 200th episode, we have David McIntosh, the uh, Director of Marketing Communications for Tastemakers. Welcome, David. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Glad to be here. Absolutely. Um, we, <laughs> after seeing your guys' uh, CES show and uh, seeing the announcement uh, uh, regarding the, the pinball cabinets that you showed there, the, you had the prototype of, I believe, Attack from Mars uh, up there, mm -hmm. and then you also announced Star Wars. Uh, obviously, digital pinball community went a little nuts and uh, are very excited about that. And then you guys come and uh, just, what was it, last week, we, two weeks ago, dropped the news of a uh, Marble Pinball uh, cab, which is actually, I believe, coming out first. Am, am I correct on that? Uh, they'll all be coming out around the same time this fall. Oh, fantastic. Okay, that's good to know, too. Um, see, we're learning things already, folks. <laughs> Question before we get into kind of the, uh, the, the specifics. Arcade one up with the three quarter cabs. That's been happening uh, for what about two years now? Yeah, we launched in October of 2018 uh, with some major retail support, and we quickly sold out and realized we were onto something special. So from there, we started to diversify some of our offering, which you saw in our countercade format. It's our uh, you know head to head cocktail cabinets, our party cade. So we really started to hit every single category and. For us, a natural progression was uh, virtual pinball as a next step. How long? How long did it take you guys to kind of think? Oh yeah, and was it kind of because like with what Zen was offering, or had that kind of been in the back of your guys' minds uh, the entire time? So when we got into the business, it was new for us. We started in the toy industry, believe it or not. We were making toys like plush toys and collectibles and, and dolls and stuff like that. So Tastemakers has a history. It's just not in video games. And uh, once they started manufacturing these three-quarter scale arcade machines, we started to learn a lot about the, uh, I wouldn't just say the industry, but also the fan base that comes with it. Uh, people started collecting these things, uh, not just one or two, but like dozens. Like they had probably five to 10 arcade machines in a, in a room and they started building dedicated rooms for our products. And from there we're saying, you know what, we, we've really hit something on the head and we've captured the essence of an arcade uh, so, so how do we evolve that? How do we keep adding value? And for us, the next uh, natural progression was virtual pinball. And uh, that's what really opened the conversation for it. So I think it's been about a year in the making. We started looking into virtual pinball, three quarter scale pinball. We actually had originally looked at mechanical, but it's just, it's so expensive and so high maintenance to do those. So we figured virtual pinball was just the, the best solution, you know, with Arcade one up success, a big part of it was being affordable for, you know, three to four hundred dollars. You can get an arcade experience. And if we were going the mechanical route, we would be way out of that price point. So 
we stuck to what worked. We started to look into virtual pinball and we quickly learned that there was somebody out there who I think you're either going to feature before or after me in this podcast <laughs> who had a, a huge library of amazing content. And it, that's Zen Studios. We, we started conversations with them. They were, um, they were thrilled about the project. They're in on this almost as much as we are in terms of, uh, you know, the resources they're putting behind it. They're really going a long way to make sure the games are developed properly to fit on the tables and, and to make sure the experience is beyond immersive, but just truly captures that, that arcade experience you know and love. Yeah, it's, uh, it's it's funny that you say with the uh, people in their arcades, I've been looking on YouTube recently and seeing some of these amazing <laughs> arcades people have been putting together. And I've kind of come up with a theory of, you know, when you have just one cabinet, it's, yeah, you can shove it anywhere in the house. And then when you get two cabinets, well, you kind of want them side by side, definitely at least in the same room. And then as soon as you go three, well, now you just have to have the arcade. Yeah, you're trying, it's like a completionist type of mentality where you have one, you're like, oh, wait, it looks empty now. I need I need another one, you know? And when we first launched, we had a very high attachment rate for risers. People, everybody who bought an arcade machine, I think it's like 60, 70% of the people wanted a riser as well to, to bring it up to a standable height instead of sit down. And once we started bundling our arcade machines with the risers, the number one accessory for an arcade one-up machine became an, another arcade one-up machine. So we found... <laughs> We found that people said, you know what, these look great. I love the artwork. I love the visual aesthetic. I now need to complete this. I need to complete the, the visual aesthetic. So they're adding, you know, tens of uh, these machines into their homes. And it's the modern game room for a, a Gen X or Baby Boomer is now an arcade one-up game room. And we're thrilled to have uh, been a part of that. That's, uh, yeah, no, it, it's quite amazing seeing what people have done and uh, the artwork on these things are absolutely phenomenal. Uh, let's let's dive into a little bit then specifically about the, uh, uh, I guess you're calling it Arcade 1-Up Pinball uh, for the official mm -hmm. title for these, yeah. Um, let's get this out of the way right off the bat. With the Marvel Pinball, everybody's been dying to know what the uh, the tables are. Now, obviously... Whenever you announced any of the arcade one-up cabs, we learn what other machines are going to be uh, included in that software-wise. But with Marvel, if you're somebody from outside the uh, usual pinball world, and uh, obviously these have never been in physical form out in the real world, maybe they don't know the titles. But are you able to tell us what the 10 titles are going to be included? Unfortunately, we can't. I I'm sorry to say. <laughs> uh, strategically, we've held back a significant amount of information on these machines not just the pinball, but some of the other titles we announced um, at uh, IGN Digital Week a few weeks ago, uh, around June 10th, we had come out with the idea of like a, a movie approach where you advertise, you show the movie, you show a trailer months in advance, build up the anticipation, build up the hype. And then once it's available, you you trickle out some information that wasn't available before. And there's there's many reasons behind that. But one of the main ones, is so that the fans have something to come back to, you know, uh, if we just, if we announced everything at once, uh, you know, there wouldn't be any newsworthiness in the foreseeable future after that. So we're sitting on the titles and we're hoping not that they just bring more eyeballs to the product, but that the people who have been waiting uh, are thrilled and, and understand that the wait was well worth it. Is it safe to say that the tables that we saw though in the video, those will be included? Correct. Okay, good. We can deduce from there. We're really good at that. <laughs> yeah. Be careful, though. I mean, I apologize for that. Uh, yeah, so it's tough because some of these are still pending approval in terms of, you know, gameplay and uh, some of the artwork is still subject to change. So even though it may show something, it, it still may change when it's final. So you may be able to figure out which games are on there by the visual, but that, not, that may not tell the whole story. As is the nature with video game development in general. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, with the looking at the actual physical cab, uh, my initial concern was when I saw the DMD screen. Uh, obviously, you're using a 14-inch screen, I believe, uh, for the the DMD display on the back box. I'm not entirely sure okay. of the dot matrix. Yeah, I think I actually I think it's eight inches to be honest. Um, Okay. In diameter. Yeah. Because it was, it, it's still retaining kind of the 16 by 9 uh, look, and it looked like the DMD was squeezed. But then in this latest video, it looks like the DMD aspect ratio got shrunk down and stretched across. And then you're throwing a whole nother batch of info on top of that, which looks like 
if I'm not mistaken, the pop-ups that would normally, like the spore pop-ups uh, telling you that you're close to reaching certain landmarks. Um, can you go into any detail about that? Yeah, so it's funny that in our rendering, something had slipped, and I don't like bringing attention to something like this, uh, but it's not going to be online. So, you know, I'm you, everybody listening is probably going to go back and rewatch the trailer video, but we had actually had like an online leaderboard leaked in that, and it unfortunately isn't going to be on this version of the unit. So these won't be Wi-Fi enabled units. We had had speculation on that. It's our own fault. Um, unfortunately, that's just not going to make it to this round of the table. Uh, however, it will come with a plunger. That has been speculation on some of them. Our early prototypes didn't have plungers, and that's a big deal. Uh, we're still working on the accelerometers and nudge detection, so it feels as close to an authentic pinball as uh, as you can get. But uh, unfortunately, there won't be any any Wi-Fi capabilities there. And and so, what the screen will tell you is is you know what your high score is. It'll have some animations and in, in part, most likely, that kind of bring the story further to life. You know, as the game progresses, there are uh, animations which tell for, like more of the story, whether it's uh, Star Wars or Marvel or Attack from Mars. The story evolves as you're playing the game, which is something you wouldn't normally get from a, a mechanical pinball. So it's really cool in that aspect. And the the team over at Zen Studios did such a fantastic job developing the game itself that it's just it's it's very, very immersive when you're playing. In fact, there, there was an article that went out by Forbes when they had first played on it. Uh, claiming that we had closed the gap on virtual pinball realism, and I think that that's really something that we're proud of. Wow, yeah, that would that would be. Uh, yeah, I know the part of the reason why people are thinking Wi-Fi too is just because you just came out with it for NBA Jam, um, mm. and apparently everybody is saying you guys have knocked it out of the park with <laughs> for a first time attempt. It's like, dang, <laughs> they really hit it. Um, will there be? Any, like, will there be any way of uh, connecting USB, say, to if there needs to be a patch to the game or anything like that? Or is it going to be a completely self-contained uh, system? Yeah, the idea is you will be able to update them um, through micro USB or USB or whatever the case is. That will only be for, like, emergencies, you know what I mean? If there's, like, a bug slips through right, testing right. or, you know, if there's a newer version of the game that needs to be updated. Um the beauty of Wi-Fi is that you could do that over the air, but we still do have a back end where we can fix those issues if anything does arise. Um, back in 2018, I believe, we had an issue with one of our PCBAs and it had a glitch on like a certain level for a handful of units. And it cost a small fortune to rectify because we ended up sell sending everybody who could confirm they had the issue a new PCBA. So that point on we decided if we ever do have to patch something let's not go through the effort of <laughs> providing everybody a new computer right? having to install it <laughs> and then pay for shipping to their house so yeah that was definitely a learning experience for us so everything hereafter will be uh something you can update uh you mentioned that the the plunger for sure we saw it on the marvel table is that going to be also included then for the other two cabinets correct awesome um Another thing that's kind of being a question is with the button inputs, you know, obviously on a standard pinball machine, the button uh, for the flippers is different than what is on a standard arcade machine and that it's actually a leaf spring, uh, has some recoil and bounce to it. Uh, it's not just a micro switch. I'm curious to know, are you guys going that route or are you sticking with the micro switch route? Um, I actually, I can't say this with 100% certainty, but I believe it's a micro switch. Yeah, where, where they're going to come back with the trying to replicate that feel is with the haptic feedback with the, um, the solenoids. solenoids they're putting in there. Yeah. Do you so have, by any chance know is it like one solenoid per flipper or are there are solenoids for the pop bumpers or do we have an, any kind of a number of what we might be looking at solenoid wise? No, the last prototype I played on had two and it was one for each flipper. Okay. I don't know if that changes for the plunger. They may use the flipper from the same. Um, the same side uh so meaning like the right side is where the plunger is as well as the right flipper right. so if you were to use the plunger that may activate the solenoid on the right hand side i'm not entirely sure they could have gone in and added a third but if i'm being honest based on cost i doubt that that's the case okay fair enough uh the pinball legs are these uh standard height uh from what everybody's used to uh are you guys getting a custom built or are they actual real pinball legs um I, I don't think they're real. They're custom made. 
they are adjustable for height wise and unlike our pinball machines these are closer to scale they're they're still they're not 75 i believe they're 80 percent um in terms of actual scale um but if that's not tall enough for you you can always go underneath and, and tweak the legs slightly to be taller okay so there's that's where mm -hmm. the adjustability factor comes into is uh basically probably, yeah yeah okay great um Let's see, can we move in a little bit to the software arena? And there's where <laughs> a couple of things that Zen has done that I'm curious to know that will be incorporated into this. Uh, point number one would be, is the view uh, of the play field locked or is that uh, adjustable? Because currently you're able to actually kind of cycle through various views. That I'm not sure. I'm actually, I would say they're probably closer to locked at this point. Uh, the reason I'm saying that is because Zen's going through the effort of custom designing the games to be compatible with our table. Oh, okay. um, it's not, it's not like they're unlocking a certain feature that would be available on Steam for a custom pinball machine. Like they're going in and making sure the aspect ratio is optimized. Uh, the, the games are optimized to run with our uh, processor as well as the the viewing angle is also adjusted so the the way the screens recessed based on the design is optimized for the playing field now i i don't want to say definitively you can't but i'm quite sure that you cannot so i, I you know i apologize for that, <laughs> the, but... no that's okay i mean this is why we're all curious because i mean from mm -hmm. what it sounds like this isn't just a port of the steam version or uh you know an android version but this is actually being custom built and adjusted for one up exactly yeah so that's what's taken us so long if it was a direct port we could have done this last year and we could have really rushed it out to market but the idea was you want a unique experience you know you you could have played a lot of the games already on you know steam or maybe consoles mobile devices whatever you know pick your poison but the whole experience of playing has to be as close to the real deal as possible. So they're going in, they're adjusting lighting, they're adjusting some of the graphics as well. They're going through and they're making sure that the um, haptic feedback is as accurate as it possibly can. They're making sure the accelerometer uh, detects all the nudges correctly. And it they're, they're going the extra mile to really develop this game properly for the machine to make it a completely separate experience than what you're used to with their products. This is not just one of our hero items for the year. This is one of theirs too. So they're really going uh, full steam behind it. The other uh, software bit that uh, people are wondering about, uh, within Zen, you're able to uh, do challenges like a one ball challenge, five minute challenge, uh, that sort of thing, uh, which unlocks uh, kind of power upgrades. Uh, some are passive, and then you have like wizard upgrades that you can actually actively boost scores or do rewinds on the tables and stuff. Curious if that will be uh, transferring over too, or again, if it's just going to be basically a straight pinball experience. Um, I, I have to be honest. I don't know the answer to that. I'm sorry. Questions uh, from Mel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Feel, feel, feel free to tell him uh, David sends his regards and all the hard questions your way. Uh, you're more than welcome to take those on, Mel. Thank you for your help. Because <laughs> in the past, whenever we've asked him anything, he's like, it's up to one up. They, they get to tell you. I'm like, okay, but th there we go. We'll 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 jump on that. Um, mm -hmm. Let's uh, move into just kind of the the general uh, ethos of one up pinballer. Uh, in with what you guys are trying to do, uh, you already said that all three are going to be basically available around the same time. Um, mm -hmm. Is this for the U.S. market or is this worldwide? For right now, uh, U.S. only. And, and, you know, just for the fans, international fans, it's not by choice. You know, for us, it, it's a no-brainer to be in every market possible. Uh, we have the capacity to do so. We have the inventory. We have the supply chain. We're just trying to find the right partners. You know, we've tried certain experiments in certain markets. And when you, when you try to rush it, we've seen the repercussions. They don't, they're not there for customer service. They're not there for quality assurance. And not saying that every single partner we've tried this with is the case, but to build an international business isn't something that happens overnight. So I'm only elaborating on this because we get a lot of flack for our four foot machines as well. Um, we do want to build the business internationally, but we're going to start in North America because we feel like we have a good grip on it right now. And then we're, we're going to expand uh, internationally, hopefully soon after. 
Awesome. Uh, in terms of store availability, I know currently uh, around me and from the online checks that I've done just with the uh, the video game uh, cabinets, it seems like Walmart's the only retailer that carries in stock of Costco maybe during the holidays. Um, is that something that will expand during the holidays or is this pretty much going to be online uh, purchasing only, uh, specifically for the pinball machine? Yeah, we haven't announced which retail partners are going to carry us at the moment. It will for sure be on our website, if not for purchase, for more information on when you can purchase around closer to uh, pre-order dates. And then uh, we will have major retailer support. We just haven't confirmed that at the moment. Okay. And then I think I had heard price point somewhere between $500 and $600. Is that uh, what we're shooting for here? Correct. Yes. Okay. Um, at the same time as you guys announced at CES, there seems to be this explosion of these three-quarter scale pinball machines suddenly. Um, a couple of other companies have also announced theirs. I'm just kind of curious mm -hmm. to know, uh, do you guys feel that there is enough room for everybody? Uh, do you even, un <laughs> do you have a theory on why suddenly there's this expansion? Because previously all that we've had are these full-size cabs that cost thousands and thousands of dollars if you wanted to get a virtual cab and all of a sudden, bam, you know, these <laughs> sub 500 machines, it's like, whoa. So I'm just curious to know what, uh, if, if this caught you guys by surprise or if you, it's a trend that you've noticed was coming inevitably. Yeah, when we first announced the products, we knew right away there would be people ripping us off. That's why strategically speaking, there's certain information released at certain times. Um, we had some of our licensed partners come out to us and, and say, hey, you know, you guys are our number one royalty paying customer. We would never do anything to hurt your business. However, there are people contacting us trying to, you know, replicate what you're doing, you know, heads up. And once you start to get those heads up from multiple different licensed partners and multiple different, you know, uh, third party vendors and stuff like that you really, you're mindful of, of what's going on around you. And, and for us, you know, we know what our unique selling proposition is. We know what our position is in the marketplace. Uh, and, and any company or any product that sells out at multiple major retailers, there's going to be somebody who tries to replicate that to get a piece of the business. We, so we knew it was coming. Um, we've done a lot of stuff to secure our place, but again, we're not too worried with any of these, um, you know, multi cade kind of knockoffs or all in ones. I think, you know, people value quality and they value the licenses we have, the the form factor that we bring to the table. And there's there's something unique about what we're doing and the way we're doing it can't, can't be ripped off. So uh, for that reason, we're not concerned about it. We honestly think competition is healthy. It's forced us to think smarter and, and work harder. Uh, it's forced us to make some tough decisions at times, but also to expand our ideas on how we you know, make sure that what the, the decisions we're doing are the right ones because one misstep and somebody's willing to take your place. You know, you you miss an opportunity and somebody's willing to take it. If there's if there's a podcast, if there's a media outlet, if there's a retailer that you don't necessarily go full out on, you know, they will. They'll take that opportunity. So for us, it's it's sticking to the startup grind, what got us here, you know, having that hungry mentality and and not forgetting that because as soon as you ease off the gas, somebody's going to catch up to you. So that's kind of that's that's where we are, and, and we're not too worried about it. We we do think the competition is healthy. Um, the biggest thing for us is just for those who do enter the marketplace to try to do it clean. You know, we don't condone piracy. We don't condone uh, you know illegal use of uh, intellectual property stuff like that. So if you're going to enter the market, do it right, and then try not to to do it dirty because it doesn't help anybody when we all get a bad rep for people who are, you know, illegally promoting content or, or promoting illegal content, stuff like that within their, their machine. So let's, let's keep it a clean fight. And, and we're happy to get in the ring. That's, yeah, Cause obviously our, your, your things. licensors will be uh, much more uh, amenable to striking deals. If they know it's all being done cleanly, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. it, it kind of helps everybody out that way. Uh, I know that, I know that we're really excited because we think that uh, this is going to open up an entirely new uh, set of pinball fans, basically. Uh, there's a whole difference between even just playing with a regular controller on a console and going up to a machine, um, standing there and you, you know, throwing your hips into it. <laughs> and I think it's exciting times for digital pinball in general because I think that's really going to 
step things forward and uh you know hopefully we have such a good run on this that uh you know deluxe models like what you guys were showing at ces where you're having you know refrigerators in the bottom of your cabs and stuff um mm -hmm. things like that can be uh implemented on pinball machines too definitely um last kind of bit of business that i'm curious about and we asked uh mel the same question i'm curious to know what uh, it comes from on your end and that is uh partnering with zen how has that affected licensing opportunities? Has it opened certain doors? Has it solidified uh, uh, contacts you guys have had? I know that Mel said that it kind of uh, opened up some uh, licenses that were, as soon as they knew that there was now going to be a retail, uh, something in stores in a box, it, it, it like opened the doors for them to going, yeah, okay, now we want to jump in. I'm just kind of curious, you guys having been in mm -hmm. it for two years in the physical space, has there been an effect of having that partnership with Zen with regards to licensing? Certainly. Yeah. So Zen, they're just known for having the largest and top quality of content and, and virtual pinball. So for us, um, it was, you know, th there's no harm done. If anything, it's been tremendous in value. When we go to retail partners and say, Hey, look, we're not just doing this. We're doing with this, this with the biggest library of, of virtual pinball content. And uh, these guys have been in the game for a while. They have a good rap. They have tremendous reviews. If you just take a minute to read some of their reviews online, it's fantastic. So for us, it's, uh, it's, it's only adding value for the strategic partnership. If anything, it's, it's also opened more doors for us because other people, uh, even though it is an exclusive contract, don't get me wrong, we have had conversations with, um, you know, Mal and Zen and, and we have in, in no way felt like it has crippled us or taken any opportunities away. If anything, some of our retail partners who are virtual pinball fans recognize them and understand that they are the, the kings in the V-Pin world. And, and, and it, it does add a lot of uh, accreditation to us. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> part of that question is self-serving also because uh, as soon as you guys announced NBA Jam, I went, oh my God, we might be able to get NBA Fast Break because you guys were able to negotiate what seemed like an impossible license out of the NBA Players Association. Um, and I'm like, oh, if we could get that. And then, of course, my head starts spinning with the Wi-Fi aspect because that particular pinball machine can link to other pinball machines and go head to head. So keep that in mm -hmm. mind. <laughs> Um, hey, I really wanted to uh, thank you for taking the uh, the time to talk to us today. This is uh, a lot of information that I know that we were all just dying for, um, even the stuff that you're not able to, to get at. It's all good because we've learned plenty that we didn't already. So again, David, thank you so much for, uh, for joining us. Best of luck and uh, I'll be looking for those uh, machines coming up this fall. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. All right. Bye-bye. Hey, everyone. Yep. Arcade one up. Can you see that? Nice. Oh, it's not, I'm glad it's not me for the first time. I'm telling you, I go through these Zoom calls, and I think it's always my problem, but luckily it's not me today. Yeah. I like the banner <laughs> behind you there, John. It looks very nice. nice. Thank you so much. <laughs> get my hands on one of these beauties yeah <laughs> oh you don't have to wait much longer we're supposed to be releasing this fall uh jerry right. what i'm sorry what country are you in i'm, I'm in, in australia. australia we hope to have some units in australia by this fall oh that'll be very, very nice. nice so that's yeah, fall I know. in the u.s that's, that's like christmas time, time over here um no, for us perfect yeah that, that would be, be very good, good. that would be nicely timed, timed. um Well, but these days, I think direct to customer is becoming more important for us. But our bread and butter is retail for sure. Yeah. For sure. Mm. Yep. I'm I'm not the software guy. I'm only the, the business guy. And, uh, you know, we'll tell you mine and Bell's backstory. But uh, when you want to talk about specs, I'm only on the very high level. What I do know is we've been working with Mel and his amazing team at Zen Studios to really provide the best VPN experience possible outside, you know, the really expensive do-it-yourself one. So we're trying to, you know, take those cues and put them in a commercial uh, product that everyone can enjoy.
Oh, for sure. It was a natural extension. You know, we we didn't know when we first started about two years ago how big this category. We didn't we didn't even think it was a category. We thought it was just a couple products. But as you know, as time went on in a very short period of time, they become almost like high end collectors, uh, collectibles. And so the art community, as well as your heart community in the pinball machine, I mean, they, they own multiple cabinets. Same, and we, we started seeing that. So, you know, as we were starting to go down and looking at what we could make in the future, we go, well, you know, we, I think these man caves need something else. And so, so when we started, started talking, talking about pinball, you know, we have, ex, well, not me. I, I can't say I'm an extra pinball. I love pinball, but, you know, we, we had experts within our company kind of just go to the forums, to the uh, VPIN forums, and really take what's really important to them and say, you know, we can actually make a commercial product for them using our manufacturing capabilities and go from there. Now, let's see how this first uh, three cabinets go. You know, the reason why, we, of course, we, uh, we partnered with Zen Studios for a couple of reasons. We know they're number one in the space. They have all the content. And because we share the same partners, whether it's Marvel, uh, Lucasfilm, you name it. Um, and so going back to the question, yes, yeah, so we'll, we'll see how this goes, but and we'll also see if there's a demand for multiple pinball uh, machines. Likewise, you know, with our machines here that you see behind me, a lot of it's about the artwork. So if, if people like these first waves and if we can start seeing people who want to collect more and, and really have that aesthetic of a, the, they like the artwork of the pinball, yeah, there's, it's possible we can continue to produce more for sure. You see the glow-in-dark carpets from the 1980s. You see all the neon lights. It's really amazing. And it, it's really giving see, people kind of my age. Uh, I won't divulge how old I am. I'm close to 50, okay? That's why I did it. But uh, <laughs> it, it, it really, you know, when we never thought we could actually have a home arcade, right? Because they're they're expensive. Each arcade mm. unit run anywhere from three to $8,000. And it was super heavy and... Uh, but this really gave us a chance to kind of relive our childhood dream of having really a home arcade. And, and part of that is also having pinball machines, too. I mean, pinball machines, as you guys know, those stern pinball machines run anywhere from 4 to 9K as well. And we're trying to find, you know, we can't get that same level of uh, experience. But I think there's something to be said of combining uh, Zen pinball's experience in digital pinball with our experience of manufacturing and really kind of giving that an ideal ex experience if you've never felt it before. I know a lot of people have seen our um, demos at, at uh, CES and other trade shows, and it really tricks you with, with all of our, you know, solenoids and, and everything like that. You really feel like you're playing pinball, but for a fraction of the price and, and the weight. Well, while you're working out the final points of that, um, Chris, I'll, I'll ask um, John a question as well. I'd noticed that um, with the latest announcement, you're actually moving forward for more interesting things to put in um, your home arcade, like gun shooters. That's pretty exciting. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you know. We first start, I mean, we really want to make all different types of arcade cabinets. You know, we, we've had the traditional beat-em-ups and we, we've had one-on-one -on -one fighting. And now the next stage uh, you know, we, we have shooter, shooting games. Uh, so we have Big Buck Hunter that's coming out uh, this this uh, fall. And it's one of those bar games that I've played when uh, many of drinks in. <laughs> and it's super oh, yeah. fun. But, uh, you know, one thing that we had to solve is that, uh, you know, basically light guns on LCDs don't really work too well. Mm. So we found a, a technology called Sinden technology that really solves this problem basically Every, all the technology is within the gun itself, and you don't need, you know, those uh, I arrays guess that, around the outside. Correct, correct. They basically have the border, and it's really more accurate. So that is going to be the lead up into a, a whole bunch of light games that we do in the future. Uh, but you it's know, about I'm, really trying to get different types of arcade games in there. I can really see like obvious choices for that. I mean, I'm just looking at the range of cabinets you got in the background with Space Invaders and stuff like that. Like mm -hmm. the, the logical progression there would be things like Point Blank or you know oh. Gunbolt as it's over there. You know, I that's like that the Grail, right? Yeah. Uh, oh man, Point Blank was one of my favorite, uh, you know, gun games. I think you know in the future once we could get it right, maybe a Point Blank slash Time Crisis cabinet would make oh. sense. Right? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think everyone That's... would love that. I, mean, oh, I think I mean. it'd sell how thousands <laughs> and thousands of units. Yeah, but I love awesome. that you say point blank because, you know, I mean, like, 
not too many mainstream gamers know about it, but if, if you really played it, because it's so addictive. Oh. And it's hard to find ones working in the arcade now because the light guns are really tired. Like you get totally. that recoil into the in the light gun. Like you've got the solenoids already in the machine, getting that recoil in the light gun, man. Well, it's gonna be pretty special. We're working on that. <laughs> no, I bet. We'll see if that works. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> okay. Mel, I think you're on here, right? I'm here. I'm yeah, Mel's, here Mel's there. <laughs> there he is. I was hey, trying to Mel. say congratulations earlier, and I was just echoing all over the place. So, uh, <laughs> congrats on 200 episode, guys. That's that's quite a milestone. Thank you, Mel. Thanks, Eve, Mel. Uh, yeah. Apparently, now I'm checking the uh, the Twitch stream. I had muted myself at some point when we went to the. Uh, <laughs> to the four screen thing. So, um, yeah. uh, Mel, you dropped a little, uh, little, uh, nugget of info on Twitter this morning. And I can tell you already, it's sent some of the boards into a frenzy of speculation, but, uh, why Ooh, don't you, uh, I haven't checked it. why don't you go into it uh, right now for us all? Yeah. We, you know, we, uh, we stay close to the community. Um, so we know when there's doubt or there's, uh, people getting angry because we haven't launched anything in 2020. Uh, we put a few announcements out earlier this year about what was going on, but obviously time has gone on. The, the announcement we were going to make has been delayed. We haven't launched a pinball game in this year, which is the 13th year of our, of our history making pinball, so that's like a little strange. Huh. All, I can, all I can tell you is that um, what we're working on now is all about the future. And we just thought it was important to refocus, stop worrying about trying to get out a bunch of pinball tables this year and build for the next 10 years. So um, back in like 2009 or 10, I was in Budapest. Uh, we were in a dark lit room and we wrote this vision, this uh, some words on the board and it just said pinball everywhere. And that was our mission. And that's been our mission from 2010 to 2020. And uh, at the end of last year, uh, we needed to kind of look and have a gut check where the industry go is going, where Technology is going, services, new markets, uh, got, you know, projects like RK went up. And we just kind of hit the, hey, we need to get strategic and set out the Pinball Everywhere Vision 2.0. And so that is what we're actively building right now. It's big, it's massive, it's ambitious, it's multiple projects, it's multiple technologies, it's new licenses, it's licenses we've worked with in the past, it's um, entering new, new, entirely new territories, new countries where we think pinball can be very successful. It's partnering up with John D again. Uh, I don't know if you guys know, but John D and I worked way back in the day on uh, on Street Fighter pinball. He took a chance on us in the at yeah. Capcom, and that was our first license table. Wow. Um, so now, like here we are building, uh, I think arcade units and pinball cabinets for people who've always wanted one, but they didn't have the space or the price range was out of reach. That that's just one piece of what it is we're doing. So the message today was just letting everybody know that, no, we've not abandoned pinball. Yes, we're very aware that we haven't released any tables this year or any games. We haven't given you much to go on, but the stuff we're working on is so big in scope. Like it just requires a lot of work, strategic planning. The partners are big and massive. You don't just like suddenly talk about it one day. Like we're, we're planning how we really roll this out because we're going to 10X pinball. And you know, that's what we're planning on. That, that sounds, sounds pretty, pretty exciting, exciting stuff. stuff. Well, he, he has three big products coming this year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you, guys know, you guys know that our people are shipping this year. So, yeah, there we go. We're, we are, are going to ship, ship something this year. Our pinball, pinball tables, tables coming this year. year. But, but yeah. you know, this is big. This is bigger than what Zen's ever done. That's awesome. I mean, you promised that it was going to be a wild year, and it, it's <laughs> up to this point, it's kind of like, where's the wild? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, what happens is you, you start building something. And then you share it with somebody or a partner or potential something else. And John knows this from how many, uh, like 15, 20 years in the industry. It just it starts snowballing and then it morphs. And then, and then somebody else comes in and pretty soon you're just like, oh my God, like, okay, this is another eight months before we can even talk about this. That's just what <laughs> happened. Um, so Mel, in our interview that we had with uh, David, uh, he, he kind of deferred on the software side and said, you can go ahead and uh, maybe elaborate on a thing or two. Uh, so I want to see if uh, if you can elaborate or if you get to play the uh, dicey game of uh, Nope, Can't Tell. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> so the, the first thing was regarding uh, with these, uh, the one-up pinball, are the table views going to be locked? It's only going to be one table view or will there be multiple table views that people can select just like they can with the consoles and such? Um, is that something we're allowed to say? I got, I, John's here to keep me in check. So no, I, I think we could say but I think it would make sense to really have it on vertical mode. 
Mm. Yeah, well, vertical is uh, standard, but you know the the different views where we oh. allow the, the game to shift up and down. Um, what, like we're still working with the size of the screen, and all these games are optimized uh, explicitly for the size of the screen and uh, and everything. So there are some views that maybe like don't make sense, you know. Um, so it's not going to be as robust as like an FX3 where you've got eight views plus some of the same ones with wide. It does just don't make sense. So you know we're we're working on the best experience. We do want to allow users to. Um, players to like have something that is best for them um so it, it, it you know that's all pretty close to final okay it was one of those things i i only noticed because i've been playing vertical uh now for basically six months and there is still the ability to shift the view it's it's pretty minor uh <laughs> with what goes down but i didn't know if you guys were going to be maybe like having just a top-down view or maybe a slightly perspective uh and you know have that as an option kind of thing um well, I mean, it's, it's, I don't know, it's hard to say, like the glass is set, you know, the, the play field itself is, is settled, right? That doesn't tilt up and down. So whatever view we give you is done in software. And there's sometimes where it, you know, the wide views don't make so much sense. Uh, it, you cut off the, the edges of the table or um, sometimes the scaling gets a little messed up. So we're giving views that make sense with the hardware and the spec that we're running on. Okay. Uh, the other question then was in regards to uh, the different modes, because uh, currently we have obviously where you can do the five minute one ball and survival challenges and those open up the passive upgrades and the wizard uh, power that you can activate. Is that a feature that is going to be part of these or are we just talking about this being straight pinball? These are pinball tables. Um, there's not really a, it's not an FX3 platform style game. So, um, you know, to, that, that's another level of development. It's another level of licensor approvals. It's not. It's a whole other thing. So to get stuff out um, for this year and to put a first step forward, um, you know, you have the, the pure pinball experience. You're not going to be doing the kind of side modes and challenges that you find in pinball effects. Okay, so it's definitely a matter of of changing our perspective. And I and I kind of got this from David that again, this isn't just a port. You guys are actually custom developing this to go into these particular cabinets. It's not just shipping over an Android version or a, a Steam version of this. Uh, oh, yeah. So, yeah, it's going to be a little bit different there. And then there's mapping. There's hard coding done to the hardware. Um, and, you know, it's funny because we've been working on pinball cabinets, we, you know, with the DIY community and some others and businesses. So we had a running head start. Even with that running head start, it's taken us, what, John, a year and a half, almost two years. That's correct. Um, it, you know, to get a real-world simulation correct and digital um, and with the response you want from physical uh, parts is to, you don't just upload it to a cloud and you expect to play it uh, streaming or something, you know, I mean, it just it doesn't work that way. Fair enough. Uh, last thing regarding uh, software, and it was something that uh, Jared was talking about a little bit also, and uh, I've noticed with the video, it's regarding the DMD screen. Uh, we saw that in the uh, video that was released a couple of weeks ago that the DMD got narrowed down on the total screen size so it's actually the proper aspect ratio but then the information that was popping up on top seemed to be the information that was typically popping up on the screen itself where it would say that you're near a particular uh, uh point total or that uh you know you've moved up on the uh the leaderboard obviously the leaderboard would be online but in this case i would imagine it would be uh, local only, but is that what you guys are developing something else to add information wise onto that DMD? So is, is that a question for me or for John? Uh, whichever well, my... of you can answer it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just said John, so I was, I was paused there waiting for him. He's got that look on his face like he's fro is he frozen? No, 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 no I am. Uh, uh, okay. What you, sorry, can you hear me? Go, go ahead and answer that. Yeah. Um, so the, the leaderboards are, are local right now. I mean, as you guys know, there's, uh, you know, the online connectivity is, uh, is not there this time around. Um, and this also, this goes back to one of the things I'm not talking about, uh, what I alluded to in building big stuff that is next level. Um, and so, you know, uh, this, this time around, it's, it's going to be a pure pinball experience. Uh, there's fantastic tables that feel, the game feels great. The DMD um, will display uh, you know, game feedback and, and things that, like what you would expect your DMD to do. Leaderboards are local. Uh, we do have local, uh, you know, hot seats. So there's some co-op. There's, there's a whole bunch of quality of life things we just put in the game. I haven't actually verified the list, but uh, we went through and did a whole bunch of just like, you know, quality of life things. And so there's a lot of good features for the local at home 
friendly matchup pinball experience. Um, and we're confident with that going out the door this, this first time around. Fantastic. Okay, good. There, that's that's the amount of hot seat grilling I was going to give to you because uh, okay. you know. <laughs> yeah. those were all questions without notice. So <laughs> we think we got a pretty good result there. So thanks for that, Mel. <laughs> well, you know, you got to look at this. Like John does a certain thing here now. I do a certain thing here now. Um, I'm not like we're not in the daily minutia of what's going on with the season, but at the end of the day, we sit back and we say, is this the pinball experience that is going to satisfy uh, the player and the customer? Is the the hardware, the quality parts, and our, is our performance good? Um, we're hitting all the benchmarks. Um, and then meanwhile, John and I are like scoping out, okay, well, what does this look like two years from now? Um, you know, how do we raise the bar? And that's what we're hard at work uh, building. The, the team on the ground daily, they're in and out there. They're, they're working hard and doing awesome things. It sounds to me that although you would not be able to confirm nor deny this at the moment, it's uh, very much a case of uh, this probably won't be the, the last round of pinball machines we see in stores or distribu distribution channels anytime soon. Just, you know, not. Yeah. We're taking this, <laughs> can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. 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 Uh, we're taking this first round and getting customer feedback. And if there's features that the community wants to see, there's always ways to update this. So it's, this is our first round and we really want to focus on the true pinball experience at first. And then when we talk about leaderboards online, those are things that we can look through, uh, you know, during the next waves or so. Look, and two other things, uh, you know, it's no secret, uh, Arcade One Up fans love to mod their hardware. So uh, that's something. And two, like good old USB and good old download a file, put it on the USB and slam it in there. So if we have to get old school and hard, you know, <laughs> like where we used to do things, like I used to update my PS4 with the USB, or no, my PS3. It was PS3 we did that. So, you know, this is for like, we are a plat we're a platform. We're hardware. We're software. We're integrated. It's not an old ROM. This is new, fresh stuff. Um, this is really, this is a breakthrough, pivotal moment where retro arcade games meet a, a modern day arcade game in modern day hardware. I mean, it's it's awesome. Well, yep. I'm sure I'm echoing sentiments here. Like, I can't wait to get my hands on it eventually when there's uh, distribution partners down here for Australia. It's uh, Christmas is going to be good. I want something a big box underneath my tree this Christmas. That's for sure. <laughs> We're definitely working hard to make sure that we have some in uh, Australia this fall. I know that uh, uh, one of the videos I was watching that uh, uh, you know featuring a guy that had collected every single one up uh, machine in there, and he made mention of the pinball cabinets, and he was like, "I don't know if that's really for me. If I want one, I'd get a, a, a full bore uh, just machine instead." And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, "I'm like, do you've already got the addiction?" And uh, I think you're yeah. going to probably buy one anyway. And as soon as you get your hands on it, you're going to be like, okay, this is rad. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, also, you got to catch them all, right? <laughs> you got to have all the arcade one-ups. I mean, if you already have 45, you need to accompany with the V-pin. Exactly. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I'm a long-term borrowing a friend's uh, Street Fighter 2. Uh, mm. Yeah, he's, he's modded it and added keys and all sorts of stuff like that but it's one of those things where i didn't realize just by having a machine there in the living room how often you just kind of wander over and go play a quick game and that's the beauty of it it's not booting up your computer loading up steam you know getting into the program and everything else like that it's literally just going over pushing one player and away you are and I can only imagine what that's going to feel like doing that with pinball, which I truly love, as opposed to the arcade games where I'm like, oh, yeah, that's nostalgia fun. But, I mean, my addiction is obvious. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's 100% correct. You know, at one hand, a lot of people just go through their arcade boards and look at it like a piece of art. But what's really great about it, it's really easy to get into. Just like in the old arcades, you step up, put it in a quarter. At least these don't need, need quarters at all. But... If you want to play a quick game, you have time between your Zoom calls, maybe 10 minutes, go for it, and then you're in and out. I mean, the simplicity of it is awesome, uh, but yeah. Well, and, and that's just it. Retro gaming, it, that was it at its core. It's quick games. It's never yeah. meant for long, massive sessions. So pinball being the exact same thing, that's why it's, it's beautiful to just be able to walk up and do it. Um, it doesn't take any thought at all. And I know that I've... I had to remap some things because he added a PC to his cabinet. So <laughs> I had to make buttons work uh, entirely, but because uh, I can now play pinball on it also. We threw in, uh, he threw in keys on the side. But once I got it all mapped in, it's just wonderful 
to be able to right. do. And he actually bought uh, some of the uh, one-up boards because uh, he's very... <laughs> One thing about him is he's very much about doing everything absolutely 100% above board legal. And uh, so, yeah, he, he went and bought, up the, bought the boards and has those himself. So I got, you know, multiple things going on. And it's, I kind of love that you can treat these as just pieces of art and you can use them as uh, absolute gaming machines. They're, they're a blast. And the price point is totally within reach as opposed to the virtual cabs which i was just like i'm never going to see one <laughs> yeah i don't have five thousand dollars to throw at this thing you know but yeah, the thing that's um wait oh yeah you know, they're so heavy hundreds yeah. of pounds. Like, like you need well, specialist equipment to move them you know yeah i mean yeah. one of the favorite things that i have or that that's fun is just anything that you can modify or just kind of add on to you know and, and with these machines you can get them from a relatively price and if you want to upgrade the sticks or buttons to Sanwa or Hap, you can do that. If you want to upgrade the, let's say, you know, the screens, that's possible. If you even want to put a new wrap, I mean, it's, it becomes a hobby. Mm. Yeah. The interesting thing that makes me wonder, like, given that this is a, uh, the, the pinball experience that Arcade 1UP is building here with Zen, mm. is very much a bespoke experience compared to the Android platform and the Steam platform. It makes me wonder, would there be an appetite for people to, you know, set up streaming rigs like you see a lot of arcades and like, for example, Deadflip's well known for this, like some sort of streaming rig system to actually stream these three quarter cabinets in real time with you know the all the split screen uh, action that you often get in these um, professional feeds you know this it sounds to me like you could with the right maybe in a future iteration you could make that a lot easier with certain interfaces in these machines like you know you can have a, a feed out that would allow you to just mux these feeds in easily without any rig because you know those rigs aren't right. cheap you know well it's something we're looking into right you're talking about having mm. like the HD amount so you can kind of show the gameplay on a different screen. And if you're taking like a YouTube video, you yeah, can show you know. yourself as well as showing that screen. Yeah. I mean, that's something that we're definitely looking into. And, you know, we, we want to support content creators. So mm. it's something that for the future, for sure, is a definite possi possibility. Mm, definitely sounds exciting. Yeah. We have a, a little bit of a problem at times with uh, DCMA type of stuff because of. Oh, yeah. um, you know, license IP and music and, um, but you know, we're, we're, that's always a challenge when you're dealing with licensed property. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, streaming games too is different, but I thought the question was more like if you want to you know, have an HD amount and then, and then stream it for YouTubers or Twitch, yeah. I think yeah. that yeah. definitely will support. We even, but I mean, that's been a problem for pinball or to overcome is like, you know, someone wants to stream Star Wars pinball or something and, and there's the, the beautiful music playing and, oh, yeah, that's and, right. and they're gonna they're gonna take that so <laughs> yeah yes. oh, we, well yeah licensing isn't it fun video games in general. <laughs> yeah i mean the the headaches that go involved with the behind the scenes stuff. I mean, it's so easy for us to think that, oh yeah, we've got a product. Why can't I just throw it up on Twitch and everything? But yeah, the business side of it is kind of severe. <laughs> People want to get paid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, definitely. We do this. We, we pay them. Yeah. <laughs> I can only imagine. We definitely pay them. <laughs> Legitly. Um, Mel, I'm curious to know, uh, how are things in terms of the guys being able to get back into the studio anytime soon in Budapest? Uh, obviously, there's things they can do at home, and a lot of it they can do at home, but when it comes to actually uh, putting hands on a physical machine to compare to what's being done digitally, there's only one way to do that. Um any uh, kind of ETA for, for those guys being able to get back to that? Yeah. Um, actually, guys in Hungary get to go back to work starting July 1st. Um, they can go to the office. We're giving people the option uh, to stay home or come in or do a hybrid. We find some guys have really embraced the work from home, and we've seen actually productivity go up. Um, there's times when, you know, it's nice to be collaborative and be together. Um, and so I think from a creative process, like, we're happy that they can do that again in person instead of over screen. Um, you know, we've been having units like sent from Arcade One Up to guys' homes, and uh, so they've been setting them up in, in there. But like other other games that we're working on, based on real uh, real machines, you know, guys have gone to the office if there's nobody there. So if there's just one person, you know, it's a big office. So if there's one or two guys that can properly social distance, so it hasn't been like they've completely had to be away from the, from the real thing. Um, but that's the situation right now in Hungary. 
I think it's a little bit better uh, in the EU than it is here in the States, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Or fortunately for them, unfortunate for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. But hey, you know, what a good time to be uh, uh, having to be stayed at home when all these cabs are coming out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and it certainly, no, seems to have shown, it certainly seems to have shown in, I think that we read somewhere, John, that uh, 1UP was seeing week-to-week -week improvement of something like 96% in sales. I mean, I don't know, the number... It starts getting yes. a little bit confusing to me, but uh, it seemed to be good. <laughs> yes, basically we saw a huge uplift uh, year to year. And it, it's because, I mean, home entertainment has become all the more important. You know, mm -hmm. right now it's, it's a crazy time, right? It's a definite new normal. And so I think people need an escape. I think gaming becomes all that more important to kind of keep your mind off the heavy things that are happening right now with this pandemic and all the political outrage that's coming right now, but at least gaming allows us really to have that you know, sense of fun. And so we're starting to see even with the sales at retail that our sales have gone up because people need to you know, make their home, I guess have that uh, safe and, and, and fun. I don't know if, uh, if I said that correctly, but yes, no, yes. It, we, it, we it, definitely it. see entertainment uh, becoming more popular because of the times. No, that certainly makes sense. Um, so, hey, uh, I know Jared's got a meeting, so we're gonna let uh, we're gonna we're gonna end mm. this. This was uh, quite uh, quite spectacular for or two hundred more than we expected. Believe me, we were trying to think of beyond the <laughs> initial interview what else we could spin our wheels about. And then, uh, thank you to you, John. Thank you to you, Mel, for uh, to popping on. This is fantastic, uh, folks. We're gonna just call it right there. So. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Jared, what are we going to talk about next time? I'd say there's a high chance of stuff and things being talked about next time. Stuff and things <laughs> is the way to go. All right, everybody, yeah. thank you so much, and all right, we'll you. all talk again soon. Bye. Yeah. Bye. See ya.